What's good, folks? It's your girl T with my, my channel, Try Say True, and we are watching Biggest Flexes in Anime number 13. This is by Nux Taku. Um, I've only just recently started watching some stuff on this channel. Um, a, a buddy of mine recommended his channel. Um, we had a discussion about the fairy tale and how he was telling me, like, hey, you gotta watch, how, watch this video. It's an hour long video about why why fairy tale is that it's a good anime anyway if you're a big fan of fairy tale um i highly recommend you check out his channel and then check out that video so yeah enough talking let's get into this video because i what's wrong with there we go i'm all over the place guys so many interruptions in between me trying to record videos it's just too much this of this flex play. series yes i'm calling it greatness because this be the right to flex on everyone i've been getting a heck ton of requests along the road hey nuts you didn't talk about law flexing hey nuts mm -hmm. you didn't talk about ichigo flexing hey nuts you didn't talk about fewer king bradley flexing well fan base welcome the to the that biggest man. flexes in anime 13 swordsman edition the hype is absolutely Ooh, real so, if you're not excited, yes. I'll just be double excited for you. Anime swordsmen <laughs> have a close place in my heart. I absolutely mm -hmm. love them. Some of them are massive flexors. And since I don't like to be repeating entries, I've already talked about Mihawk, a lot of Zoro moments, even though there are more that I plan on mentioning eventually. Urza, Sin de Badu, and like, you know, Guts from Bazoi. So this isn't necessarily yeah. going to be the eight greatest swordsmen of all time. No, this is going to be the biggest flex is in anime swordman edition. I have picked out some massive swordman flex. I think you'll enjoy this video because I love it. Damn it, this one was so much fun to put together. Let me know future anime flex videos that you would like following a certain theme. And let me know certain flexes you would like me to cover. On my last video, I told you if you hit 80,000 likes, the next one will be out within a week. And if you look at your watch, it's more than a week because you failed. That's right. I was able to take my time leisurely scratching my ass for an extra several days before working on this video. Because yes, that is what Lord Noxenor does for fun. So, 80,000 likes and biggest flexes in anime 14 will be out within a week. Smash like, subscribe to see when it comes out, because to be fair, it'll probably come out anyway. Just, I have no rush to uh, commit to a certain time frame, because I'm very awesome. So with that said and done, okay. first flex! And I think we have to start with the king. King Fury Bradley, the homunculus known as Wrath from the anime Fury to the Ahude. One of the greatest anime series. Why did you pronounce it like that, sir? Now, for the majority of the series, this man made believe he was just your humble old swordsman. In fact, he didn't even make believe he was much of a swordsman. He was just a dude who walked around with his sword, because why the F9? In the first episode yeah. of Fury Mate to the Ahude, he fights general. against Isaac McDougal, the ice guy, and completely annihilates him in a second, and then says, Wow, I was just lucky that I bumped into him when he was injured. It's thanks to you guys hard work that we got my butt thanks to their hard work Bradley <laughs> annihilated his face he didn't take any credit for it because he's a bit of a mad lad but even early on quite the flexor he was when ed took his yeah i thought he was chill come a state alchemist and he made like a spear and he wanted to flex on bradley by being like ha you're just gonna let me here in front of the king well i could easily kill you right here and now he runs up to bradley puts the spear next to his face and bradley's like wow full metal incredible work and then you didn't even notice that bradley drew his sword but but somehow he managed to draw his sword, cut the spear tip off Ed's spear, resheath his sword. You didn't see any of it. Yeah, it try again, dude. And he just says, keep up the good work, full metal. Heck yeah, massive flex right off the bat. And I always oh, yeah, like for counter real. flexes because Ed tried to flex on the Fuhrer, but uh, then Bradley counter flexes. Those are the best ones. increases the power of his personal flex dramatically. That's the rules of flexing. I should make like a whole card game based on flexing. I think that that would be a brilliant idea and definitely a positive Do source it. and outlet for me to spend my resources. That's right, Flex Nation, which is, by the way, a sick name for a card game. We will flex on the world all together. Okay, fine. Enough of this whole thing. The major flex okay. I wanted to talk about in regards to Fury King Bradley was the absolute hype that surrounded his entrance in the final arc of Fudimeto de Edu They thought he was dead. They tried to assassinate him. They blew up his train and whatever. There was no hope of Bradley actually surviving that. He's just your random old dude with a moustache. But little did they know, characters with moustaches never go down easily. As of course, no. we learned from Alex Louise Armstrong, even within the world of Food Imagine Anarchy Music, but is who does, as well as characters you like Lord saying it like that. and his sensei, Lord Twigo, Senpai Samaku. May he shine so his glory upon us all. But when Bradley, the guy who, by the way, did not die in that little accident, actually enters the battlefield, you know, shite is getting real. The Mad Lad does not stop. Facts. So, like, hey, if you have pretty much badass, overpowered old man, has a mustache, or 
has the long flowing beard and bald head. If they got one, one of those criteria or a combination of, you know, two of those, whatever, like, just know they, they about to wreck your whole shit and make you wish that you just stayed home and not called them an old man and underestimate their abilities. They'll make you want to go back home and train. Battle after battle on end. And you know he means business when he starts things off right. Oh, yeah, he doesn't try to sneak up on anybody. He doesn't try to take no. down important good guys all stealthily. Heck nah. He's an old dude with a sword and he starts off by charging a tank head on. The mad lad makes his presence known taking down a tank with a sword. If that's not a sword flex, honestly, I don't know what you're smoking. He takes down the tank, a ton of soldiers, keeps moving forward, heads to the roof, fights like the weirdest allied forces of all time. A Chinese prince who's inhabited by a good homunculus, a ninja warrior, and this bear of a soldier with like a crocodile for a hand. <laughs> the mad lad does not stop flexing throughout. Even when they try to suicide bomb him, he slashes the head off all the sticks of dynamite and what's even more than all that despite all the chaos he leaves and tragedy mm. that remains in his way this man does not lose composure for an instant and when i say he doesn't lose composure i mean even the aftermath of the battle where he gets blown off the side of a massive building then proceeds to need to fight scar the mad lad does not flinch for a moment his composure alone aside from all these massive feats this one old guy is doing with a sword is a massive flex and i'm so happy i started off the swordsman flex it's like he mentally just goes Blank and just like acts on instinct. <laughs> Next flex, Trafalgar D. Waterlaw from One Piece. There are a lot of great swordmen in One Piece. Law happens to be one of my favorites. And now let me talk about the grandiose flexes that he gets a lot of. I thought I loved Zoro. But then I met him and I was like, I do want to say him popping into Marineford, saving Luffy's butt and just leaving is kind of a huge flex. This was the world stage where the next generation is making a name for themselves. This is where Blackbeard comes to life and where Kaido is afraid to go, but in Pop's Law as an absolute mad lad. All right, very cool Law. Next we see of Law, he's completely taking down a Marine ship, including a Marine Vice Admiral. Okay, still very cool. He completely fools Caesar Clown to make believe he's working with them when in actuality his main objective is to kill Caesar's boss. And how does he do so? Well, he goes to the strides and he's like, well, you guys want to take down a Yonko? Oh, sick. The best way to do that is to take down Duffel Amigo, <laughs> nicely real. done there, Trafalgar D. Wajula. That's actually where I am in the I'm anime. About Law's flexes, and I'm certain this is the one that you're thinking of. A lot of people. They just got to dress Rosa. Requesting. I watch it, Dove, so don't flame me. Law was fighting against Virgo. Virgo is quite the beast, extremely strong, mm -hmm. and Law fights. Oh yeah, when I was Law scared during his fight. Sword slash, he doesn't just slice Virgo in half. No, 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 no. He no. slices off the entire top half of the island, the entire massive yeah. smile factory headquarters, the mountain surrounding. The guy lopped off the top half, an island with a sword strike. Did he need to? No. Was it hella more cool and a huge flex? Yes. Now yes. I love this move. I love Law. Every time he's on screen. It just makes me so goddamn happy. Even in the Wano arc right now, Facts. manga spoilers for about a minute. Hawkins captured like oh, most no. of his crew, and he has this weird voodoo. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait, 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 wait a minute, he said. Alright, let's see Q two seven forty eight. Okay. I don't wanna know. I don't wanna know nothing. Okay. I don't. We're not there yet. Not want to mess with. And again, I could talk about Law forever. Psychologically and philosophically speaking, he's probably one of my favorite characters in One Piece as well. In fact, I think he's my second favorite character in the series, and there's like hundreds of characters. Like not even Oh, so many. Here. Every I island, just opinion, new people. Law's biggest flex was nothing I've mentioned, even though I've mentioned a lot of really awesome stuff. There's this system called the Shishibukai system. The seven warlords of the sea. Seven pirates mm -hmm. that are extremely dangerous that the government gives special protection to in order for them to work with the government. On the one hand, the government doesn't want to deal with these really dangerous, nasty pirates that hate them. On the other hand, they get special assistance. Downside, they're humanizing these monsters. Now, they're not going to take any random bozo to become a warlord unless they have prestige, might, and power, like Chairman Buggy. And Law decides, yeah, well, which made no sense to me. How the hell? He wants to track down a few people. He wants to know where a few things Is are standing. And therefore, he wanted warlords. to become a warlord. So, in order to make a name for himself, he nonchalantly, alone, walks into a marine 
main base where he, by the way, has a massive bounty on his head and says, I want to become a warlord and I've brought you <laughs> the beating hearts of 100 pirates. Yes, known pirates. I am flexing on you so hard. You have no choice but to accept me into the ranks of the warlords and the flex works. The Marines got so flexed on, they just welcomed him right into the warlords in order for him to rebel against them just a little bit later. The flex is huge. He flexed on the warlord system, on the Marines, on the pirates he fought, and his flex got him further. Law is an absolute mad lad. Next flex, Shichika from Katana Gatari, an anime that not enough people have seen, even though it's absolutely no. amazing. No, it is nothing I've never to do watched with the Monogatari franchise, except it's written by the same author, and it's fantabulous. Every episode is like 50 minutes long, and I can't get across how much what? I like it. So like 10 or 12 episodes or something. Give it a watch, minutes? fam. Damn. It's actually great. Dialogue's amazing, but I get ahead of myself. The story follows Shichika as the protagonist, and Togame as the other protagonist. In this world, there are several extremely gadgets damn overpowered broken swords that like kill everybody because they're so strong now togame okay. wants to gather all the swords and enlists the help of shichika to do it in this world of epic swordsmen and swords battles shichika is the only one she could trust why you ask that is because anyone who has possession of one of these swords is only going to want to use it for their own ideals and not actually give it to togame togame needs someone that has no desire for these weapons once they enter their hand and the reason why Shichika, the strongest swordsman in all the land, doesn't want it is because the swordsman Shichika does not use a sword. His body is his sword. It almost sounds like a meme. That's how amazing it is. And no, it's not a meme, but it's even more amazing. He's trained in a sword style where he does not use a sword. He is the perfect person to traverse the land and try and gather these weapons for someone else because he has no need for it. In fact, he's far stronger without these legendary weapons. Now, he gets into a heck of a a lot of fights over the store. He fights against the different keepers of the different swords, each one more dangerous, more powerful, and more psychologically interesting than the last. Not all are bad. Some are genuinely good people this. that offer I've their lives to protect these weapons, and you get into a lot of really interesting philosophical episodes. But the point is the following. We don't care about super deep psychological and philosophical episodes. We don't care about the adventure of a lifetime, even though it's an anime that literally no one watches for no reason. We don't care about the fact that Togame is one of the best women in all of anime. We care about Shichika's epic sword flexes and the fact that he doesn't use the sword to flex. There are even these ninja guys that are also searching okay. for the swords and Shichika bumps into a lot of them along the way and uh, annihilates their faces. His first attack, more often than not, just shatters the weapon of his enemy because he's like, well, my weapon can't be shattered. My body is literally ready. This man embodies the my body is ready me. And of course, anyone that fights him along the way is like, uh, Nani, why is he coming against me even though I have a sword? And like a little army, and he's coming barehanded with like this weird tunic <laughs> thing. And with the most like happy Let's, they and let their pain, guard down, man. expression on his face, he says, I'm here for a good duel. Let's do this. And the guy's like, <laughs> And then they proceed to get completely annihilated by Shichika's epic sword style. Damn. It does not involve a sword. Yes, this is a sword flex, and it's a good one. Watch Katanagatari. Next flex. This one is from Konosuba. It's the legend himself, Kazuma. Kazuma is not a particularly strong fighter in the world of Konosuba. No, not at all. And he kind of abuses poor Aqua, who's this goddess whammon that ended up stuck on this journey that ends up bait more often than not. So when the strongest Damn. swordsman in the world, <laughs> you know I'm serious because this is the world, not so what, sees that Aqua has been completely derated by these armies of monsters that they use her as bait to fight, he gets furious. How dare you do this to the wonderful and benevolent goddess? So the strongest warrior in all the land attacks Kazuma and says to Kazuma, Kazuma, I challenge you to a glorious duel. To which Kazuma doesn't even give him a second to breathe. He immediately replies, okay, draws a sword, runs at the most powerful swordsman in the world. Oh, shit. Like, I wasn't ready. He trips. Kazuma uses his steel spell thing on a steel swordman guy sword, which is too heavy for him to use because he's not a high enough devil, and he just, like, makes it appear above his head, plonks it on the guy's head on the flat side. The guy is completely knocked out. Didn't even get a chance to react. Kazuma, the absolute mad lad, completely overpowering the most powerful fighter in the world with skill alone. I love that. I love how in Konosuba, the fights don't always Wind, wind up, up to a massive dick, dick measuring contest of whoever could pull <laughs> out a bigger sword. In this case, it's quite the opposite, in fact. And, of course, after Kazuma does this, he keeps the massive sword of Ultimate Night Dude, to which Night Guy has to beg and grovel for him to give it back, purely to flex on him, showing his supremacy, and continues to use Aqua as bait in the future and not listen to oh Swordsman Guy. Swordsman Guy can't do anything about it because, well, 
Kazuma's just a Trench. more valiant warrior. Huge flex on Kazuma's part. Big fat W goes to the troll. Next flex. And this one is from Jin from World Trigger. And you know World Trigger serious because it's called World Trigger, not Zawado Triggered. Because if it would be, then you then you couldn't necessarily think it's serious. Point is, Jin is a huge mad lad. Everyone who watched World Trigger absolutely loves Jin for obvious reasons. Mad lad being definitely one of them. In World Trigger, instead of like mana or chakra, I. I'm gonna pause for just a second. Like, yo, he's recording these videos and stuff, right? But I just want to know: Do you live alone? Are people in the house when you are just yelling like this? <laughs> I, like you're just sitting in front of your like desk and you have your mic just right here. It's like, it's like animated the entire time because like his videos are long like the freaking what was it like i said the fairy tale one an hour long and he has this same level of energy and enthusiasm throughout the whole video and you know for a fact he talked way longer than an hour he just you know obviously cut and spliced it together so he's just sitting at his desk for hours upon hours just screaming into the mic with so much enthusiasm about anime and I love that. <laughs> it's so nice. Hell, bargain basement magic system you want to come up this with. is what real Triana. passion Triana looks like. Flows within everyone. Triana is what they use to make projections of themselves to fight. Triana is a really cool power system, and I actually have it in my top 10 power systems of all time. In that video, okay. very cool, Lord Noxenor. Very cool. Now, certain people that have extremely high, dense levels of Trion develop something called a side effect, which in English is uh, a side effect, but it sounds way cooler in Japanese. The side effect manifests differently in every single person who has one of these side effects. And in Jin's case, it allows him to see so glimpses stupid. of the future. Yes, possibly broken, but hey, it definitely doesn't detract from Jin's massive flex. Now, he flexes a lot. There's this massive war, and he doesn't tell anyone what's going to end up happening, and he acts so smug and cocky about it, making them try to say, wait a second, if Jin knew this is what would happen if I do this, then I'm going to end up doing that. And Jin smugly manipulates everything behind the scenes in order for people to do different things, and it's beautiful. But my favorite Jin flex in World Trigger is when the higher-ups in Border, the organization that keeping out interdimensional enemies, also known as neighbors, decides the weapon in Jin's hands is too strong for him. They really call neighbors? Honestly, politically, That's Jin funny. just does his own thing and he doesn't listen to the higher up supporters. We're gonna need a confiscated weapon. He's done some things that we don't particularly agree with. We're gonna take him out of the picture. So they gather together a massive squad of some extremely powerful dudes, some of the really strongest members in border, in order to go hunt down Jin, politely ask him to give up his black trigger weapon, and if he refuses, to fight him and take it from him. Now here's where the flex comes in. Jin knew this would happen, so he elicited the help of a few friends. So that was a nice surprise for the party attacking him. But even then, at the end of this entire massive fight, he single-handedly takes down some of the really tip-top member guys, luring them into a close enough area for him to release his Black Trigger's ability and take them down. He's an absolute mad lad. He smiles constantly while doing it. He has a ton of really oh, wow. smug lines throughout. It's beautiful. He manages to take all of them down. The higher-ups in border are like, oh my god, this failed. Now Jin is gonna rebel against us and he's like way too powerful we can't have this mad lad rebelling against us no and while they're having a meeting saying this is actually terrible Jin walks in and Jin says hi I just wanted to give you guys my black trigger the mad lad was gonna do it anyway but if he did it without flexing on them first they wouldn't have listened to his future demands now that he's doing it through the massive flex of taking out all their guys and then just happily giving it to them that's a huge flex which means they need them the flex actually has a purpose apart from just flexing it just makes it so much stronger damn it I love of this. He gained a political edge on these guys that were against him by taking out their entire squad and then just giving it to them. God damn it, I love World Trigger. Next flex from Archer from Fate Day Night Unlimited Blade. Mm -hmm. So, a lot of people very often ask my opinion on Fate. Fate is an extremely popular anime franchise, and while I think that Fate Zero is in my five favorite anime of our time, Fate Day Night ain't. It doesn't even make it to like my top 100. Okay, maybe that was an exaggeration, but it definitely doesn't make it to the top 50. Fate Day Night Unlimited Blade Works, though, does do one thing great, and that is Archer. Archer is one of my favorite anime characters of all time, and when I hit a million subs, if I hit a million subs, I promise you that I'd make a top 100 anime character list, and damn it, Archer's definitely gonna be on there. Now, in the beginning of Fate Day Night Unlimited Blade Works, Archer flexes on Shiro a lot. He very much vehemently opposes and detests Shiro's ideal 
Tails for very well explained reasons. And because of that, even though his master told him to protect Shiro and not to hurt Shiro and everything, he does it in the most flex accentuated <laughs> methods possible. Oh, no problem, Shiro. I'll save your life. Oops, didn't mean to kick you in the balls that one time. That's just actually okay. half the time that Archer saves him throughout. Now, I really don't want to get into spoilers because in my personal opinion, Archer is the only reason to watch Fate Stay Night Unlimited Blade Works. And he is such a good character and plot point that I would recommend the entire Fate Stay Night Unlimited Blade Works anime on his clout alone. He ends up throwing down a little bit with Shiro in the middle there and uh, his little cameo, shall we call it, at the end of Fate Stay Night Unlimited Blade Works was a massive flex on the King of Kings himself. Kiryu Kameshi! As well as everyone else who believed his ideals were very tarnished. So, in all, I had this whole character analysis planned of Archer and I never got ahead to doing it because it just never happened somehow. But in a nutshell, it explains his psychology so, so much more. If the animation in their fight scenes the is on Blade point. Blade Works alternate reality when he was fighting Shiro, it's kind of to push Shiro to a point that Shiro can actually become a man. And he succeeded in doing so. He flexed on Shiro so hard that when he fought against Shiro, I believe very much he was trying to wake the F up out of this pussy bitch protagonist that he used to be. <laughs> Again, it's very hard to dance around this without spoiling. I do think him making believe he was dead in order to flex on Gidigamesh at the end there to be extremely satisfying. Gidigamesh's last word being, oh. Just still makes me giggle inside at the beauty. <laughs> and also, let's not forget that this guy is a archer, yet pretty much only uses swords. And for the most part, yeah. uses those swords close up. Even when he pulls out his bow, it's only to use the sword as an arrow to shoot the sword. The guy is the most epic swordsman of an archer I've ever seen in my entire life. Flexing on the word archer itself. Extremely cool. Archer, extremely cool. Flex, flex. Ichigo Kurosaki from Blech. The next team, smash like, and biggest flexes in anime 14 will be out within a week if it hits 80,000 subscribe but we're not done yet. all right there is one flex that involves a certain swordsman that i've been avoiding that is correct my favorite anime swordsman and no it's not guts i've already talked about guts in the past this is my favorite anime <laughs> character of all time over here. and it's from the man the myth legend himself gintoki sakura oh, from gin taurus final flex Gintama is a parody series that is completely hilarious, but has many, many deep goddamn parts. Gin is still a freaking awesome flexor. This man, in an age where samurai are forbidden to wield swords, he goes around carrying a wooden stick. Yes, it's not a sword, it's a stick. But he is a swordman, and he will break people's swords with this stick. He will shatter their blades as well as their wills and their butts. He's broken many butts with this stick. This mad lad goes up against actual swordsmen with this stick alone. This guy, this individual, is wanted by the police. The cat by the government, by Hello? space pirates, Police? by terrorists, by, by rebellious douches. Literally every major force in Zawaldo wants a piece of Gin. Whether they want him on their side or they want him dead. And Gin flexes on all of them, proceeding to go about his everyday, daily life in the most nonchalant way possible, no matter the massive world powers and tyrants that want him dead or worse. You know someone's a true mad lad if they flick a booger at a space tyrant, right? Most people don't have the ball, but Gin has the Flex. He'll, get He'll get worked up, up over the stupidest things in the world, like uh, if the store is all out of no the issue man. Shonen Jump, Gin will freak the F out. But oh, is that a massive space armada coming to decimate the entire planet? I time to get my stack! Gin is an absolute mad lad. I love every fiber of his being, down to his wavy ass hair, which I have to say may or may not be a slight inspiration to the hairstyle of my avatar, which wasn't at all okay. copied from Gin. In fact, I would say Gin Toki probably copied my avatar's hair. Very cool, oh. Gin! Very cool! He's my favorite Bro. It's all exactly time. spot on. Forever. And he flexes so hard that in episode 8 of Gintama, yes, I know the episode because I just restarted the whole thing with a friend of mine. I'm going through it. I am loving every single goddamn episode. It is my favorite anime for a reason. It is literally me incarnate. It's the greatest thing ever. And in episode 8, we start talking about other characters and we only get to Gin at the halfway point in the episode because, like, you know, Gintama has a cast of really amazing characters. And for some reason, he mentions, damn it, they didn't even play the opening in this episode because they were waiting for the main character. That's right. All right. So now that we're at the main character, which is how we should have started, to be honest, play the opening now. And then the opening theme starts. He flexes on the fourth wall. He flexes on the meta. He flexes on everyone. Gin Toki is the ultimate flexor. Flexing on that is, his time. That's a, that is a, I can literally quite a talk flex, about man. every single episode of Gintama, pointing out exactly what I love about it and why Gin is a sick flexor. But once I'm talking about episode eight, I will take this one scene into account. No, it is not the time where he convinced an entire crowd that 
wetting your bed is philosophical mastery that we can only hope to attain. <laughs> that waking up in warmth instead of needing to wake up, get out of your warm bed and go to the bathroom in order to come back. That's he cruel stuff right there. Just piss in bed. This. The warmth envelops you. You don't need to get up. It is bliss. And he moves the hearts of the people. That is a huge flex. In episode 8, Kondo Isao, leader of the Shinsen Gumi, challenges That's horrible. the duel to the death and then she gets cold. Wamen. Now, of course, being that Gin so. is an absolute hero, he accepts the duel like a hero should. And after making Kondo stand there on the beachfront where they accepted the duel for a few hours, he decides to show up, flexing on him, making him wait for a few hours for absolutely no reason just because he knows that he would. Then when Gin enters the duel, Gin says, I understand that this is a duel to the death, but there is no way I will fight you to the death. I am a hero. I am not someone that will kill. And Kondo's like, damn, I even brought an extra sword for you to use. But if you won't, then I very much respect you. And Kondo drops his own sword and then proceeds to tell Gin, for a man with silver wavy hair, you speak very well. And Gin says, and you speak decently for a gorilla too, which obviously insults Kondo, but Kondo will not lose his composure. Gin says, however, now that I see you are truly a man of culture, you're dropping your weapon, you're willing to take me on. Here, take my wooden sword. It is my favorite sword. And they're both starting to appreciate one another as two honorable samurai that only fight for justice and would never ever do anything backhanded or cruel. When he gives Kondo his wooden sword, Kondo says, wow, this duel, whatever the outcome, it will be beautiful and remembered forever. And then Gin takes out a second wooden sword, which immediately implies that Gin knew this whole thing would occur. He predicted everything perfectly. He knew that they would have an honorable discussion. He knew that Kondo would drop his sword. He knew that he would give Kondo his wooden sword, and he knew that that would move Kondo. Kondo is now fully enraptured in the duel, and then as his sword swing begins, the top half of his sword snaps off because Gin spent the day that he came late whittling down his sword to be thin enough so it would snap before anything. And then, so after childish. Gin gave him the sabotaged weapon and he was immediately defeated before he, was like, he began, Gin proceeded to annihilate the heck out of his face, just basically beating the crap out of him with a stick. He flexed on him so hard. He flexed on his morals, on his dignity, on making him wait there for an hour. He called him a gorilla and still somehow Kanto trusted him to be a moral and noble sword. Yeah. He flexed on him How? so hard and with such beauty, Kondo accepted Gin's weapon, which was a completely sabotaged sword and he didn't even expect it for a minute. And Gin proceeded to flex on him even harder by completely annihilating him. And then in the episode right after that, there are posters put up all over the town trying to take down Gin because Gin beat up Kondo, a very reputable dude, which in turn just further muddied up Kondo's reputation because, like, now there are posters everywhere saying that Kondo is beaten up. Even the wanted posters were a flex on Gin's Part. Do you realize <laughs> that I only selected this flex of his to use because I just saw that episode a few days ago? Do you realize that there are over 350 goddamn beautiful episodes of Gintama that no one freaking watches? Be a man, watch Gintama! But no wonder why Gintoki okay. is my favorite anime character of all time. Not only is he the sarcastic asshole, not only does he have a serious moments, but he's also a huge flexer! Wow! It's like he's Nuxtaku personified! Gintoki, Sakata, the white devil, is the greatest anime character of all time? Thank you so much for watching. I hope you did enjoy this video. Smash like 80k and biggest black. All right. Well, thank you for putting this video together. I have a true appreciation for people who take the time to make uh, comparison videos because it just shows their vast knowledge in the subject. Um, and also it shows you different uh, anime that you should be checking out. There were a couple on this list that I will definitely go back just so I can get the names. Or I'll check... Actually, I'll check the description to see if you put them in there. But yeah, that's all, folks. Be sure to check out his channel. Uh, what's it? Nux? Nux Taku? I think I'm pronouncing that correctly. But yeah, I'll have the video linked down in the description below. That way you guys can check that video out. As well as check out some of the other stuff he has on his channel. He has a lot of content. I really love his thumbnails. So if I had the time and energy, I would do everything cool, nice thumbnails. I just don't have the time. My day job takes up way too much of my life and i'm just gonna be so happy when it's over but yeah that's all folks it's your girl t it's my channel to you be sure to like comment and subscribe on my channel let me know what you guys think about this video as well as suggest some things in the comments down below that way i know what i should be looking at because you guys be putting me on some stuff so why not i'm gonna keep reacting to what you guys um send me if it's something i haven't like seen or haven't seen in a really long time i'll definitely check it out but yeah i have a list right here some stuff i'm gonna check out from you guys that i got in your comments um, I do check my comments uh, every few days or so. But um, yeah, that's it, guys. Uh, remember to take it easy. Focus on yourself. And hopefully 2021 is a lot better than 2020 for each and every one of us, okay? Till next time. Peace.